Namandaps, 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 Namandaps.
Please join me in Gasho. When we say Namo Amida Butsu, the benefits we gain in the present are boundless. The karmic evil of our transmigration in birth and death disappears, and determinate karma and untimely death are eliminated. Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namo Amida Butsu, Namandaps, 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 Namandaps. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our next August YouTube service. A part of me can't believe it, but I have now been serving at the Tacoma Buddhist Temple for over a year now. This has truly been a learning experience for me. It has also been a pleasure and a privilege working with the members of the board and the members of the temple. When a new person, such as myself, enters into the lives of many, or a sangha, it can be challenging at times. We have to work together to figure each other out. And I have to work on many aspects of how I approach situations and how I operate to better serve this sangha. In this way, I am still a student. I am a learner. In this span of one year, I have been able to meet many sangha members and some I have been able to actually have meals with and long discussions. I must continue to better my listening abilities to remember all of the stories and family connections many people at the temple have. This year has been very humbling. Everyone has shown such strong support to Reverend Cindy and myself. It is also humbling to see just how dedicated everyone is to this temple even in this time of pandemic. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. This morning's Gosandai comes from Shinran Shonin's Wasan on the benefits of saying the Nembutsu in the present. And I wanted to speak about that today because I guess in American society at times when we take a job or when we join a club or when we join anything or subscribe to a service like Netflix or YouTube or Hulu, 
we often ask ourselves, what do I get out of it? What, what, what's in it for me? What are the benefits that I'm going to receive? And it's the same thing when, in my case, I am kind of a fan of the Hilton hotels and I want to build up my points. In so that regard, I ask, ooh, what do I get out of it? What, what do I receive? If I become a Hilton Honors member, what am I going to get out of it? Well, if I stay at enough Hilton hotels and build up and accumulate points, then I get th those points can be used towards other benefits like getting free rooms or uh, getting free snacks or maybe getting a free meal at the hotel. So these are all things that we as humans have or how we operate in our minds. And I think this, in, our, in a sense, is the same thing that goes through our heads when we join a temple, when we join a religious organization. How is this going to help me in the afterlife? Or is this going to protect me from the human condition? In Buddhism, one of the traditional understandings of our existence is that we are on a life and death wheel called samsara. At the end of the lives we live, our karma can, be, can lead us to either heavenly realms where we experience blissful pleasure or hell realms where we experience much suffering. Then, after experiencing the various realms, we circle back to the human realm of existence and once again try our best to achieve enlightenment. For only in the human realm can we hope to achieve the same type of enlightenment the Buddha did. When we achieve the ultimate awakening, we are able to, in a sense, jump off of the six realms of existence. We are able to jump off of the wheel. Then we are no longer subject to the continuing cycle of birth and death. However, since we are human and are carriers of the human condition, we cling to this world as we do not want to leave it. We have become so attached. To best illustrate my point, I would like to direct your attention to this image. I'm not sure if many of the younger Dharma school students know what this is, as I have not seen one in a park recently. Uh, I might be wrong, but this is an old-fashioned merry-go-round. Basically, a few kids can jump on, and someone on the outside can spin the wheel, and you are taken for a joyous ride. After a while, you might get dizzy. Now, imagine that this wheel is so much fun that you never want to get off. I think many parents can relate to this analogy as when kids go on fun rides in an amusement park, they want to go on the ride again and again and again. The parents start to become tired and want to go back home or go back to the hotel to rest, but kids never seem to lose any energy and they want to go on that ride again and again and again. Thus, the cycle continues. This, in a sense, is how our existence in samsara is. While in this life of the human realm, we may suffer because of our kleshas or human afflictions, we also become super attached to this world as well. This is why we rely so heavily, he so heavily on Amida Buddha. Our teachings tell us that when we, as followers of the Nembutsu, pass away, we don't cycle, uh, we, we don't repeat the cycle of birth and death. We are born in the Pure Land, the realm of ultimate nirvana. We then become Buddhas and awaken to the supreme nirvana and then return to this world as Buddhas to guide others to the Pure Land. This life that we lead now comes with a lot of ups and downs. The life we are living now is the most important, for it is in this life that we are living now that we are fortunate to hear the teachings of the Buddha. We are fortunate to be born into a life where we have been able to encounter the Nembutsu and learn of the great ocean of wisdom and compassion, to learn the name of Amida Buddha. Then we must ask ourselves, on a daily basis, how are we going to live this life we are living now. How are we going to live this life of listening to the Dharma? For when we encounter this teaching, it is never a one and done situation. Our founder Shinran has also mentioned and commented heavily that we are still people, we are still human, and will commit errors in our lives. 
Just because we encounter this teaching doesn't mean that our bonbu nature goes away all of a sudden. Yet, then to also know that the Dharma, Amida Buddha, still works for our benefit unceasingly, this can inspire us as well. This kind of mentality can inspire us to continue to better ourselves and live this life with a sense of gratitude, even in the time of pandemic. Yes, we may not always get what we want. We may not always get to do the things that we used to do. Or we may have to make adjustments in our lives to fit the time we live in. And yes, we may be unhappy about some of these changes. Yet, as Jodo Shinchu Buddhists, we do not stay in that state of unhappiness. Little by little, we turn back towards the teachings of the Buddha and take refuge once more in the ultimate truths of interdependence and impermanence. This year has certainly been a wonderful, challenging, and educating experience for me. I am most certain that as the years progress and I continue to serve this congregation, I will still learn more and more. I look forward to more lessons from the Sangha. I would like to thank you again for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come and continue our journey in living the life of Nembutsu. Please join me in Gasho. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namandabs. Namandabs. Namandabs.